Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Howling Wolf and I'm gonna be sipping on some black cherry tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, fluorescent purple, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I'm gonna to be using a white piece of chalk for some drawing, and then I'm gonna be using three brushes from my brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brush line. They are a, let me just put them in order here. I've got a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number two round synthetic brush, and I have a number one fan brush with natural bristles on it. I will be referring to these as large, small, and fan throughout the painting process. And of course you could switch these up as well if you like, but that's what I'll be using. Uh, if you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you a, with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and size of the canvas to the same type of paint and the brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that, that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, purple, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it really nice and dark up at the top, and then we're gonna fade it down to a lighter color down at the bottom so we have some nice atmos atmospheric dimension in our painting. As I go through this process, I'm going to be using a left to right brush stroke and I'm gonna be transitioning my black to my purple to my yellow to my white. And I'm really just looking for a nice soft background that's dark at the top and light at the bottom. I may end up doing two coats to it, but the first coat that we, got, that we put on may look a little, um, we'll say, unfinished. And as we go through the process, if we need to do a second coat, we certainly can. So I'm gonna start with black paint on my brush and I'm just gonna be going left to right up at the top. So I'm gonna bring the black, I would say probably about a quarter of the way down my canvas. So this way I can transition into the purple with, uh, with having a good amount of the darkness up top. So we have a nice dramatic sky to work with. So just a little bit further down with this purple, or with the black, that's pretty good in through there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my purple without washing my brush. So I'm picking up quite a bit on my dirty brush. You can see the backside of it's black. And I'm gonna get this to blend right in with the black up above. It is, the black is very overpowering. So as you're going through this process, if you don't start to see this purple appear and it still is just black, then you know that you probably have too much black left on your brush and you may want to either, I wouldn't recommend washing the brush, but you may want to wipe it off on your paper towel. That'll release some of that black from it. But you can see I'm still getting some black to come off of my brush with this purple paint. And I'm doing that intentionally so I can have it, that purple kind of looking like it's a nighttime purple instead of a real vibrant um, fluorescent purple, which is what we're 
we're using. So once I get down, I would say a little bit past that halfway point, I'm going to start introducing yellow into my paint, um, onto my paintbrush without washing my brush again. So this way the colors really talk well together. So I'm picking up purple and yellow on my dirty brush. So you can see there's still a little bit of black left on my brush. And I'm just going to start bringing this down towards the bottom. So this is going to create this beautiful atmospheric color with that yellow and the purple just kind of intermingling with one another and then as I'm coming down towards the bottom I'm just going to pick up more yellow on my brush and I just continue to release those colors that are within the bristles of my brush and that's what's going to allow all of these colors to just intermingle with one another. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up um, purple, yellow, and white. So I have purple, yellow, and white all on my brush, about equal parts of those three colors. And I'm gonna get this bottom part to go really light. So purple, yellow, and white on my dirty brush. And whatever color happens, happens. You don't need it to be exactly as mine. Yours might end up a little bit more yellow. Yours might end up a little bit more um, purple. Whatever happens, just let it happen. This is intended to be just a, ni a nice natural kind of transition. Maybe there's some kind of moonlit atmosphere that's happening down behind these trees or back off in the atmosphere behind there so just let happen what's going to happen and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go back and forth on this and let it dry and then once mine dries I'm, I will most likely do a second um, layer because I can see that I've got a lot of kind of stripiness, um, a striping kind of look to it. So a second coat will definitely um, help to get these colors to smooth out with each other. So I'm going to let mine dry. I will do a second coat doing exactly the same process as the first one. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got yours done, you can certainly do a second coat if you want to, and then you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some atmosphere in our background. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are white, yellow, and purple. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is nice and dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to be doing is I want there to be kind of like a mysterious, foggy, smoky mistiness coming from the, uh, from the forest of trees behind our wolf. So I'm gonna be adding these almost like atmospheric swirls, kind of like the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, where it just kind of, the all of the fog and mist kind of takes on the colors in the, in the sky and the atmosphere. So I'm gonna be starting with my yellow and purple, and I'm gonna be adding like these real kind of fun, just smoky, misty marks. And then we're gonna add some stars by just using this brush and using a little bit of white and kind of splattering on some a thousand little tiny stars. So I'm gonna start with yellow and purple on my brush. I don't need a lot and I want it to kind of look like it is transparent or translucent and my yellow and purple are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of start midway up my canvas and then just kind of start pulling these up in this carefree type of manner. I'm just gonna start with yellow and purple and you can kind of go back and forth. Like one time, maybe you use a little bit more yellow. Maybe the next time you pick up a little bit more purple. So you can really just kind of keep going back and forth. And when I get down here, I'm just gonna kind of blend it in or just let it dissipate into this bottom area through here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it in a minute, but right now just kind of getting these um, kind of heavenly type of marks and airiness into the sky. Because they are, this paint is transparent or translucent, it will get darker as it dries because of the colors that are underneath it. So don't be alarmed if you do this and it goes a little bit darker than you had expected. You can always add more to it. So now that I've got that on, now I'm going to 
put a little bit more lightness down at the bottom. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of purple, yellow, and just a itty bitty bit of white on my brush. So I have those three colors on my brush and I'm gonna bring it from the kind of the um, forest floor, so to speak, or behind that forest, and I'm just gonna kind of bring it up into the atmosphere. You can use a circular type of brush stroke. You can continue to use that striping kind of pull up into the atmosphere, but I'm gonna use most likely more of a swirling type of a brush stroke, so it looks a little bit more like those could be low-lying clouds or fog as opposed to just streaks in the atmosphere. And then in this area, I know my wolf is gonna be sitting there, so I don't need too, too much there, but maybe a little bit in through here where you know maybe it'll just creep up and you can see it behind the wolf. And we're gonna have lots of trees down at the bottom of here. So it doesn't need to be perfect, perfectly executed because you'll have a lot of disguising kind of um, elements to it. So once I've got that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white paint. You don't even need to wash your brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint and then just kind of um, rub it off on the side of my palette or you can even kind of tap it off on your paper towel. And then I'm gonna just start flicking these thousand little white spots in that atmosphere. So this is gonna make it look like there's just a million tiny little stars way off in the, in the atmosphere. If you wanted to, after you do this, you could put more of the um, colored parts on top of it, or you could even use your tiny brush if you wanted to. I'm pulling out my tiny brush just to show you what maybe a little bit larger of a star might look like. You could you know, make a couple larger ones, or you could even put a little shooting star off in the distance somewhere. So feel free to, you know, make this into whatever whatever you want it to be. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna use our um, piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put whatever brushes you were using away, take out your chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our wolf. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend, again, that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers or dots, and then we're gonna connect those dots, um, and by the time we're done, we'll just have a nice basic shape that we can utilize during the coloring in process of our wolf. So what you'll first wanna do is kind of find yourself the center of your canvas, left to right, top to bottom. So for me, that's right about in through here, and then I'm just gonna make myself a little bit of a mark. Then I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom of my canvas and make myself, I have a dysfunctioning piece of chalk, there we go, <laughs> make myself another mark. I'm gonna connect these two. This is gonna represent kind of the underside of the wolf's neck and then the chest. So I'm gonna come in a little bit and then bump it out. So I'm gonna start in through here and I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit in that area like that and then just bump it out like this and then curve it back in towards my marker that I just made. And then what I'm gonna do is from here, I'm gonna go over to the right about halfway between there and the end of my canvas over here. So somewhere in this vicinity, maybe a little shy of that halfway mark, but somewhere in that vicinity. Then I'm gonna make another marker down in the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna come up about an inch and a half, make myself another marker somewhere into here. So I'm gonna connect these two. This is gonna represent the back or the top of the back of the, the wolf's head and then the back of, or the top of its back into here. So I'm gonna come down with kind of a little bit of an arcing line to about here and then we'll curve it and go back into there. So I'm gonna take it from here, I'm trying to get my hand out of the way here, and I'm gonna bring it down somewhere in about this area in through here, and then I'm just gonna kind of curve it just a little bit back to meet this marker in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself the tip of the ear. So when a wolf's head is leaned back like this in the howling position, its ear kind of lays down, um, almost touching its back. So because of the, the posture that it has, the ear is gonna kind of tip down. So I'm just going to make myself a little part that bumps out in through here. So I'm gonna take this a couple inches back from here, 
right about in through here and then right where it kind of dips in here that's where the rest of it's that's where it's going to end and this is just going to be the tip of the ear when we go to paint it and we'll paint the rest of the ear in through here but right now we just need that edge of the the exterior silhouette of it so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come from here i'm going to go up almost halfway between here and the top of my canvas so somewhere about here and then I'm gonna to go to the right of that about an inch, right about in through here. And again, it might not be exactly, you know, halfway from here to here, but somewhere in that vicinity will work. This is gonna be the tip of the nose. I'm gonna connect here to here with the top side of the mouth or the face, and then the bottom side of the, um, of the mouth, so, or the face. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bring it down in a little bit of a curved line like that and then I'm gonna go up a little bit like this and then bring it back down into here like that. I'm going to connect here to here. This is gonna be the top side of the face and then we're gonna give it a little bit of a bump where the, um, where the forehead would go. So I'm gonna take it from here and I'm gonna continue this trajectory from here. So I'm gonna take this and just kind of go straight up in that diagonal way for about maybe another inch and then I'm gonna dip it down just a little bit and bring it back over and kind of give it a little bit of a curve by that tip of the nose. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. So when you got this done, you can put your piece of chalk away. We're gonna be using our fan brush for the next step. So you can, oh, actually, I take that back. We're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our wolf. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a dark gray color that we're gonna utilize for the entire wolf as the base coat. So I've got my brush in hand. I have pre-mixed myself my dark gray, but I will show you how I got there. So this is the color that I'm going for. How I got to that was I used quite a bit of black, quite a bit of brown, and just a teeny tiny touch of white paint. So I really want this to be nice and dark. Um, so when I build my fur on my wolf, I can utilize this dark contrast underneath to get some great dimension. So this is about where I'm headed. You can see it is lighter than my black and I used the brown just to kind of neutralize it so it wasn't too cool of a tone. So once I've got that dark gray color, I'm going to be painting in my wolf. I'm going to be using a brush stroke that is kind of a directional brush stroke, but I know it's gonna be a pretty solid color. So the only place that it really might make a difference is when you're on the edges of the wolf, if you want there to be a little kind of, um, a little bit of a fluffiness to the edges, you can certainly just pull that brush out along those edges. We will be, um, when we add the details to the wolf we will be accentuating all of the hair throughout the whole thing or all the fur throughout the whole thing but when you're going through this initial um painting in stage down in the bottom i find that wolves are a little bit fluffier and they've got lots of um uh, texture to their hair down below so i would say from the neck down you could certainly take with the brush and just kind of pull it out a little bit around those edges but when you're at the top part of the wolf, I'm gonna give it smooth edges around my chalk mark. So this is just gonna follow my chalk mark. I don't need to do any specific brush stroke, just kind of get this whole area colored in. I am just kind of, you, you can go right up to your chalk mark. I'm just kind of leaving just a little bit so I don't lose my way when I'm painting. Um, around that background because my background is pretty darn dark so sometimes you can just leave a little hint of that chalk mark just to help guide you through the painting um, if that chalk mark goes away you might actually make it too big during the painting process so that kind of keeps you in your in your border so to speak and then again down in through here it doesn't the paint stroke is not really that important and then i'll just keep it nice and smooth around this ear as well so just kind of slowing down you could certainly use a smaller 
um, brush as you're getting into these edges if you want them to be super clean but we're going to be putting lots of fur and stuff like that on them so they don't have to be clean edges and then we're going to be using our fan brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this large brush away take out your fan brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our pine tree forest. I'm gonna be using my fan brush. The colors I'm using are black, green, gray, and maybe a little bit of white as well. So how I'm gonna do this, I wanna kind of have this pine tree forest. I don't want it to be overwhelmingly taking up any of the focal point, but I definitely wanna have it in the um, background so we set the stage for this beautiful wolf to be howling in a forest somewhere. So I'm going to be having it look like some of the pine trees are kind of close to the wolf and then some go off in the distance. So I'm gonna have some lighter tips of pine trees in through here and then I'll have them darker and coming more in focus as they come towards the bottom of my canvas and then I'll have a couple of tall ones up around the sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of my gray paint that I used for the, for the wolf itself. This is gonna set my back trees a little bit further back because they're gonna be a little bit softer looking with the gray on them. And what I'm initially gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of rub in a couple of what would seemingly be tree tops. I'm not gonna go much higher than, we'll say like the, the where his ear is for this area in through here, but I want to have um, different heights to these trees. So I'm really just kind of rubbing in some, some vertical lines at this point. Now I'm gonna put that gray with a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. So gray plus a little bit of white paint. And I can just kind of tap in the, um, the branches themselves. I'm using the, the gray plus the white again to make these kind of look like they're out of focus a little bit, uh, allowing them to have these really soft kind of um, appearance to them. I'm gonna put a little bit of green on in a minute. So it, it will read as pine trees, but right now just kind of rubbing this in just a little bit, kind of tapping my brush um, in an angle towards the side. So now I'm picking up a little bit of gray, white, and green. So I have all three colors on my brush at the same time, and I'm just gonna use the edge of my brush and just kind of tap in these little bits of um, branches or the illusion of branches. I'm going in a diagonal type of way, so it looks like we've got a little bit of a point at the top of these trees, they can overlap one another. And again, I've got gray, green, and a little bit of white on my brush. And I love to use multiple colors on my brush like this, simply because it will provide me with different values throughout that particular area. So this is looking pretty good for my, my distant trees. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load my brush with black paint and put my foreground trees or the closer trees in place. So again, I'm going to kind of just mark myself where I want some of these trees to go. Maybe we've got that one there. We've got maybe a shorter one here, maybe a taller one in through here. I'm gonna be putting the tips of them in front of those ones. And of course, you don't have to have the same exact number of trees that I have. These exterior ones I'm gonna bring higher than here. So I'm gonna have these maybe about where his chin or, or his neck is, maybe somewhere over here. Um, I'll put one here and then maybe a, a little bit taller one in through here. So I love to just kind of make my markers and then expand upon that once they're on there. So using this fan brush, you get to really have the essence of these um, natural type of edges to, to your trees. Pine trees are inherently um, just kind of long triangular type of shapes. So I will typically do the tippy top of the tree first and then as it merges down into the ground, you can certainly um, be more carefree about adding the, um, the, the direct um, detail of those branches. So I just kind of get the tops going and then in a second I'll kind of be a little bit more carefree as I'm going down towards the um, towards the base of the forest and just kind of giving these their little their due justice. I think I need one in here as well so something like that. And then when I get down towards the bottom 
again, I can be more carefree, dotting kind of almost over the majority of them. You can have little peekaboo spots where your trunk shows or not. That's totally up to you. I'm going to put some green on these in a, in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting the base coat for them. Um, and then I'll just add a little bit of some highlights of green on them in a minute. Bringing these up in through here, just giving myself some nice tippy tops to the trees to give it a, a lot of depth and dimension in my pine tree forest. And then I'll have a couple in through here. Again, just kind of using the edge or the side of that, of that brush to give me this um, really organic and nice natural type of look to these trees. You can have those branches coming out really far or they can they don't necessarily have to lean down. There's different types of pine trees that some of the branches go up, some of them go down, but the general shape of that tree is typically a triangle type of a shape. So I'm going to do a couple of these on the right hand side of the canvas as well right now and then I'll come back and put some green on here. So I've got my my brush and I'm going to do maybe one back in through here and again just kind of giving myself my, my tree markers or my tree trunk, so to speak. And then I can, once I've got that in there, I know that this one's gonna go right behind the ear. So I can just kind of um, tap in a little bit of this black. All of these are gonna just kind of scoop right behind the wolf, but maybe we've got a little kind of detail at the top of this tree. So we can just kind of make out that it is in fact pointy and it is in fact a pine tree. So we can give a little bit of that evidential um, detail on there, something like this. And then this one over on the right hand side, I don't really need to do much. Just kind of, again, giving a little bit of those exterior branches and then it just kind of comes back and it's gonna hide right behind the edge of my wolf. So now that I've got the tree tops on there and the points and giving them all kind of their due shape, I'm gonna just pick up some green on my dirty brush and I'm gonna just kind of put the, the essence of some green uh, pine needles on here. So if you had a distinct light source, like if you put a moon or you knew where the moon was gonna be, like I feel my moon is on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna attempt to get a little bit lighter on the left-hand side of some of these. And that way that will give the illusion that there is in fact, um, the light source is over on the left hand side and you can color over, you know, some of those peekaboo spots. You don't have to bring this green all the way down to the edge of the tree. But if you want to, again, give that little illusion of that left hand side being a little bit brighter, that's going to make the viewer understand that the light source is over on the left hand side. And some of these trees are going to be in front of others. So if I wanted like this left tree to be in front of that one, I could put black and green on my brush and just give the little illusion of the, the side of the tree going in front of that one. So it's just a, a real carefree kind of step, allowing for a little bit of dimension to happen in through here. And I would always suggest letting it dry and seeing if there's any additional marks that you wanna make. If you might wanna put a little bit more darkness in those trees behind it. So if you want you know, to add more to that, you can. I'm gonna put some green over on this right hand side as well. So again, just put a little bit of extra green on my brush, bringing some of these branches down here on the left-hand side of the tree to give it a little bit of a luminescent value. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can fiddle with it all you want. Then you can put this fan brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our wolf features. <laughs> so this will be the eye, the nose, the mouth, and a little bit of the ear. We'll put the ear in place and we'll, we'll finesse it later with some other, with some more fur details. But I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are definitely black, white, and uh, maybe a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna first do is put my nose, eye, and mouth in place with a little bit of black paint. So I'm gonna pick up a touch of black paint. I'm going to put my mouth in place first. So I'm gonna come about, I would say a third of the way between the tip of my nose and down here. And I'm gonna make 
this will be the little opening of the mouth. I'm going to bring this down this left hand side and then I'm going to bring it down the right hand side in kind of like a arcing type of a line. I'm gonna color this in with black paint in through here and then I'm gonna put my mouth on which is gonna just kind of extend from here or the, uh, the opening of the, the top part of the bottom part of the jaw, <laughs> something like this. I'm, I'm extending it back into this vicinity. So something like that. So this will be inside the, the mouth. Then what I'm gonna do is using this black paint, I'm gonna put a couple of little nostrils on so the um, wolf's head is turned. So we're gonna see mostly just a little sliver of this left nostril and then it kind of just um, maybe scoots up a little bit in through here and then maybe just a teeny tiny sliver of that left nostril nothing more than a little sliver I'm gonna put a tiny mark at the back of that nose right in through here just so we can kind of separate the nose from the face itself it doesn't even have to be a firm line just something like that I'm gonna be putting my eye on so my eye kind of sits right back from the bridge of the nose and not and and kind of underneath um, this bump in through here. So somewhere right about here. Uh, what I was finding when I was looking at these pictures of wolves howling is when they're typically when they're in that howling position with their head up like this, their eyes seem to be kind of closed. So I'm just going to give a little like slit in this direction, maybe pull it up a little bit in that corner and maybe pull it back a little bit into the head in through here. Then I'm gonna move down to my ear and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take from this corner and just kind of extend it up into the head a little bit with a nice kind of sketchily type of line, so something like this. And I can take this, the remnants of the black that's on my brush and just kind of brush it into that fur underneath um, or behind that ear. This is just gonna help to uh, start our shadow making and our fur making back there. I can also take that black and just kind of give myself a little dark center to that ear. So I didn't wash my brush, I just used whatever the remnants were on my brush to give myself a little darkness in through there. Now what I'm gonna do is just kind of finesse around this face a little bit. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and white, or excuse me, brown and white on my brush at the same time. So just a itty bitty bit of brown and white on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna just illuminate the, the um, nose a little bit. So just a little bit of brown and white is gonna give me just a, all the illumination I need for that part of the nose. This is now, as I'm getting into these smaller details, I can start to get rid of my chalk marks um, that I feel would behoove me. Um, along the face, we're gonna be using an, a different brush to put all the fur markings in, but I do know that I wanna have a little line over here on this left-hand side and maybe around that mouth a little bit. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna give myself this bright um, line over here on the left side. That's gonna speak to that um, vibrancy of maybe the moon or whatever else is on that left hand side illuminating that. I'm even going to put a tiny bit of this on the tip of the nose. Again, just kind of speaking to the vibrancy of um, the light source that is in the surrounding atmosphere. Maybe a little bit of this brightness down in through here. These smaller marks I wouldn't be able to do with um, with the brush I'm gonna be using for the fur. So I want to kind of tackle them while I'm here. I just put a tiny bit of brown and yellow on my brush to get this to blend in just a little bit with that gray that's next to it. So yellow and brown went on my brush to get that to blend in. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of this brightness with yellow and white on the edge of the mouth right in through here. So just yellow and white, and I'm just pulling it in just a little bit into that mouth, and then this bottom side of the chin is really gonna get a lot of brightness. So this is just um, yellow and white on my brush, and probably a little bit of the remnants of the brown as well. And I'm just kind of getting this real bright spot to happen on the front of the, um, 
of the mouth or the, the chin right in through here. And again, we'll finesse it more when we go to put the fur on, but this is a pretty good start. I'm gonna do the same thing around the eye. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, yellow and white on my brush just to give myself a little bit of tiny hairs or um, little fur around this eye. So when we go to do the um, the bigger areas of fur around here, we've already got a little bit of detail happening and just kind of a little finessing in through there and that's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna make this nose just a little bit lighter. Just as it was dry, it got a little bit too dark for me. So there we go. And then we're gonna be using our fan brush for the next step. So once you've got this started, you can uh, put your small brush away, take out your fan brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first step to our fur. I'm gonna be using my fan brush. The colors I'm using are black, gray, brown, and white. We will be adding more colors to the fur on a future step, but for this step, what I'm really um, desiring to do is make sure that I have my fur going in the right direction, that I have the right length to my fur, and that I have a good tonal value to it. So what I mean by that is I want my fur to look like it's darker over on the right hand side because I'm uh, I'm implying that my light source is on the left. So I want it to be darker over on the right hand side. I want to make sure that I have some shadowy or darker fur in that neck region. And then I want it to kind of progressively get lighter and lighter towards the left and maybe towards that muzzle area in through there. So that's that speaks to the tonal shift of it being dark to light or the gradient values of it. So I'm going to be using a lot of my black and gray and brown in this area in through here. And then as I go towards the top portion or towards the left, I'll be using more of my gray, brown, and white. So I will eliminate the black at some point so I can just get it to go lighter and lighter. I'm gonna be using various brush strokes with this brush. So sometimes you'll see me using it in the fuller sense, which is using it um, in this horizontal way, but I'll be pulling it like this. That's where I'm gonna get the most number of pieces of hair to happen is when I'm flat like this and just kind of pulling it. When I want there to be more like clumped areas, I will end up twisting my brush a little bit and doing more of a using it in this direction. When I want longer hairs, I'll be pulling it longer. And when I go up towards the top, you'll see me using a more dotting or stippling effect, which is gonna represent the shorter lengths of the hair. In the ears, I'll probably do a little bit longer because I'll be pulling my hair towards the inside of the ear. So I'm gonna start in my dark region and move my way towards the, towards the light. So I'm gonna start with black paint on my brush. I'm under this side in through here, so I'm gonna start pulling out my pieces of fur in the direction I feel that they're gonna fall. So they need to have a little bit of a curve so they um, tell the viewer that this, this animal has a roundness to it and they have to have a curve to them to show um, that the, the form of the body and what direction they're going in. I'm gonna put some down at the bottom in through here. So everything I do comes with a little bit of a, of a curve in the direction that I feel it is um, important to put it in. So I have that black on my brush in through here. I'm gonna have a little bit kind of underneath this neck area. And you don't ever have to go 100% all the way fully um, black, which is why I'm using this fan brush. So it allows me to have this almost streaky look to it but I definitely wanna have some darkness underneath this ear and where that neck is. So now what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up some of that gray and brown on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna give me this, um, these additional kind of streaks within the darkness of that black and, and gray that we created. So this is allowing me to um, bring in the texture to the fur without without making it too much lighter. So this is allowing me to introduce that gray with the dark values of the black, allowing it to have the, um, the appearance of it being darker. I do need to close the gap between my wolf and this ba these background trees, so I'm gonna just bring out a little bit overlapping in through there. 
So that's looking pretty good in through here. I'm going to start to transition into maybe a little bit more brown back here. I just picked up a little bit more brown. Um, and again, we will do one more layer on the on the fur. So if it doesn't look 100% the way that you anticipated it to look at this point, don't worry. We've got another we've got another great step to go. So as I'm transitioning up in through here, I just picked up some more gray, but now I'm picking up a tiny bit of white as well. So this is going to start to give me my lighter values of my fur as I'm going up towards the top. I do want to um, show some of this darkness underneath. So the gray is acting as my black does here. So this dark gray is acting as that base dark tonal value to the fur over on this side. So I'm just kind of bringing this out in the direction that I feel um, the fur would be coming out. So it's kind of coming out in this left hand curved type of manner and I'm going to get the fur to be long up to about here and then it's going to be short after that. So I'm just using my gray and white to get this um, layer of the fur on in through here and I always just want to make sure that it transitions with that previous section. So I'll just bring it back and overlap it a little bit into that previous section so we don't have just a bright and dark area. We must make them transition themselves as well. And then I'm going to bring this up a little bit in through here right in front of um, this ear and maybe on this back side of the face, it's gonna kind of curve like this. So this is gonna be a little bit long hair in through here. And then as we work our way up that face, we'll start getting it shorter and shorter, but I'm just kind of building this. I'm gonna put a little bit more lightness or a little bit more white in the equation as I'm working my way towards this left side. And again, you can probably see on camera how this fur is just building itself right now and it's looking nice and, and fluffy. And of course, on this side, I wanna close off this gap between my fur and my tree as well. So just making sure that that's covered. I'm gonna put a little bit of my gray and my white in my ear. So I reloaded with gray and white and I'm just gonna kind of pull this from the edge of the ear in a curving manner in towards the center so it can overlap that center area just a little bit and if you ever get to a point where you're like whoa i just did way too much just give it a second let it dry and you can always come back with darker tones on it so don't fear that you you know made a boo-boo or you went too light or anything like that because you can always bring back the dark tones. So that's good for the ear. Now, as I'm working my way towards the face, I'm gonna be using that dotting or stippling type of um, brush stroke to get it to appear to be more of a shorter type of fur. So if my hand gets in the way as I'm going through this, sorry about that. And I don't have a ton of paint on my brush because I wanna make sure that I maintain control and that I don't over blend it because I wanna have that textural element to my paint. Um, and if I have too much paint on my brush, I will I have a tendency of just over blending. And that'll mean that it will just be a solid color. I want there to be some texture, especially in through here. Maybe as I get towards the face, I can use more of a scrubbing or scumbling type of brush stroke where it's gonna be, look even smoother. So as I'm going towards this, um, this face, I haven't reloaded, I'm just using the remnants on my brush and just scrubbing it on here. So again, that's gonna be the shortest of the fur. The um, dotting method will give you a little bit of texture. The scumbling will give you the visual depth to it, but it'll give you a softer appearance. So again, just brown or uh, gray and white on my brush right now, maybe a little bit more gray. That was a little bit too, too bright for me. So just the gray and the white, and you can see how this is building a beautiful um, textural element to the face without going too bright. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown and white now. As I'm nearing this front of the face, I want it to go just a little bit lighter and warmer looking. I did not wash my brush, I just picked up a little bit of brown and white. And this is where I can just start to really get this front area a little bit brighter. And we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can certainly fiddle with this all you want, but again, know that we will be, our next step 
will be adding even more information to this. So if yours isn't 100% developed at this point, it's okay because we've got we've got that next step that's going to add kind of the the finishing details on the um, on the fur, and then we'll come back and we'll do some little tiny details on the the face with whiskers and stuff like that. So no, you you've got more more work to do. So don't panic if it's not exactly as you had um, as you think it should be at this point. We can we got lots more work to do, and then you can wash and dry this fan brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur. We will be on a future step doing little whiskers and stuff like that and little fine detail, but right now we're focused on finishing the fur. I'm gonna be using my um, fan brush. The colors I'm using are gray, brown, burnt sienna, yellow, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know because I might have to tap into black it possibly, but what I'm gonna do is I'm really just wanna put that last final fluffy layer on it. I'm gonna put some real bright highlights over on this left-hand side, which will be with my white and yellow. I do wanna use a little bit of burnt sienna to create um, some nice chestnut type color in this wolf. The wolves can come in all different kinds of colors, so I just opted to go for a, a style where they've got a little bit of like a chestnuty brown color kind of on the nose, so, you know, in the transition from the ear to the head and maybe a little bit in its face as well. So I'm gonna put another layer of fur over the whole thing and as I'm doing, I'm gonna talk my way through it so you can understand what I'm doing. But really what I'm gonna be doing is similar brush stroke to what I did on the first step, only this time I'm gonna be elevating the lightness of the, um, of the tips of that fur so it can make it look like it's got more volume to it. And I'm also gonna be adding that highlight and then the additional colors that we're gonna introduce. So I'm gonna start back in through here. I'm gonna be using my gray plus a teeny tiny bit of white and brown on my brush. And for me over on this back side, again, I don't want it to be too, too light. So I am really just gonna concentrate on putting just a little little bits of um, the fur information back in through here. I definitely wanna make sure that I've got some little tips on my fur coming out these back edges, just again, so we can um, feel the, the fullness of the, of the fur and of the, um, of the way that it's overlapping into the, the forest area in through there put a little bit more gray and my brown on there. Just, I feel like this looks a little flat in through here. So just kind of adding a bit more. The brown is great for just adding on top of this these dark tones. You can add that little bit of extra oomph with a bit of brown because we used um, such a nice neutral gray underneath. This helps to, to add that illusion of, of depth within the fur. And then as I'm working my way towards this um, lighter side. Again, gray is going to be my foundation and brown and white are going to um, act as my lightening agents and allowing me to get these um, beautiful kind of tips to the fur. Starting, I started over on the right and I'm just kind of working my way towards this left. I'm using kind of um, shorter type of brush strokes or kind of um, I'm not pulling them too, too long, but I'm definitely making sure that I've got some um, direction to those pieces of fur. So every now and again, you can flip out a couple of little pieces so it looks like they've got um, their own, you know, their own wildness to them. I think that's sometimes what happens when we're painting fur is we tend to make it almost too perfect looking. And to me, if I was a wolf out in the wild, uh, the groomer doesn't exist in the wild. <laughs> so my hair is probably gonna be matted a little bit. It's gonna have some spots that are, you know, going in different directions. Nobody came and brushed this wolf before it, you know, appeared in the painting. So know that you can have that messiness to it or those carefree edges that don't follow the same curve as say the general direction of that fur. So as you're going about this, you know, just know that the in in a lot of areas kind of the 
you know, you don't want it to become so messy that there's no order to it, but you can certainly, you know, put that brush in a little bit different direction. So right now I am predominantly using, I had gray on my brush, but I also am picking up that brown and the white so I can get it to look nice and warm and vibrant coming over towards this left-hand side. And I'm gonna be switching back and forth between those three colors primarily through the rest of this main coat. And when I get into the areas where I wanna add, say that um, burnt sienna, I will definitely let you know. So gray, brown, and white are the colors on my brush. And of course I want it to be really nice and bright over here on the left. So when I find I've got a good amount of lightness on my brush, I may just kind of come over here and tap it in. And I want some of these longer kind of strands appearing uh, on this back side of the face. So it speaks to the, the type of wolf that I was trying to emulate in through here. And maybe there's some little like dark spots where it's kind of clumped underneath. So just keeping those kind of things alive, a little bit of longer fur kind of coming over this ear. So you can see as I'm doing this, I am using lighter values to the paint, especially over on this left-hand side. In my ear, I'm not thinking I need much in there, maybe a little bit of, a couple little bright pieces in that center. I think I might um, put some brown in there in a minute, but I'm thinking that's pretty good in through there. I'm going to add my um, brown and white little specklies kind of up in this head, up and through here, maybe a little bit more white so I can really see the texture of this fur. So this is brown plus a little bit of white. And again, I'm just kind of allowing myself to get lighter and lighter where I feel it should, like maybe right up here above that eye. And I'm just using this dotting type of technique to get that on there. And then I want it to transition into maybe the side of the face. I'm gonna put some yellow and white and burnt sienna in a minute, but right now I've got this light value on my brush and it's um, allowing me to put these little marks of lighter fur where I want them to happen. So well, again, while I've got it on my brush, I might as well, I might as well utilize it if I'm, if I know that I want it to appear elsewhere. So I'm just kind of tapping it in, in through here, making sure I've got some good texture in through here. That's looking nice to me. So I'm going to now start putting on a little bit of burnt sienna. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I picked up a little bit of burnt sienna so I can get some little bits of extra um, color in here and I'm not using much. Burnt sienna is great because it can be a bit transparent so you can just kind of add it in addition to these and it's, um, and it's gonna show some of those colors underneath it. I'm gonna put some over in through here just to kind of get it to transition and make it look like we've got some other colors in that um, animal's fur, maybe a little bit on the tip of the face. So again, right now I'm also thinking about getting rid of my chalk marks. So if I've got little bits of um, chalk marks here and there that I want to get rid of, I, and if I see them, I can just kind of rub my brush over them and that'll, that'll take care of them. Maybe a little bit of this burnt sienna over by this mouth a little bit and sometimes just rubbing it in and allowing it to carry into um, some neighboring colors will make it look nice and natural. Just rubbing this in and through here. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white. So I'm not washing my brush, a little bit of yellow and white on my brush. And this is where I'm gonna get these really beautifully bright little notes on the tip of the fur in through here, allowing again the, it to speak to the um, that light source, maybe pulling a couple of longer pieces down in through here. Uh, let's see, where else do I want this? Maybe a little bit on this mouth in through here. And if at any time you feel that you want to switch brushes, especially when I'm going into these smaller areas, you can certainly utilize your small brush to do similar things to what to what I'm doing. Um, you don't always have to just muscle through 
a, a step because that's the brush I'm using. If you find that you would rather be using a smaller brush, feel free to do so. I just loaded my brush with a little bit more brown and white. Um, the yellow was getting a bit too yellow for me, so I'm toning it down with a bit of um, brown and white and just bringing myself this nice brightness along the edge of that neck. This is looking nice and maybe a little bit more. And again, I'm going to do some final details on the face as well. But right now, oh, this is looking so cute. He's he's enjoying his evening. I maybe pull a couple little brighter pieces in through here. And when you do this, if you find that there's an area that you put too much burnt sienna or whatever, just feel free to bring back some of the original color or, you know, just continue to enhance it until you've got it in that... Um, in that textural way that you want. I feel like I need to do something on this ear part. I just wiped my brush off, or washed, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black paint. I think that I want to kind of accentuate this top part over here. So I just put a little bit of black paint on my brush. Ears looking like I feel like I want a little bit of black along that edge yeah that looks good and and again this is one of those things that I was seeing it and I was saying hmm, something's not right there so I just felt like I needed to put some of that black in through there so now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and brown just to kind of give myself a little bit of this texture in through here and maybe a touch of white to to finish it off so you know when you're going about it if something looks flat or something looks like you feel you know, you need a little bit more information, then go ahead and put it. And, and if it wasn't the right decision, you can go ahead and reverse it after that. But again, I just want some nice texture in through here, making sure everything just kind of transitions into one another. And you know, if you feel like you, this needs to be a little bumped out to, so it doesn't look flat, just a little bit more lightness in through there, we'll do that trick. And then fiddle with it all you want. We're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put this fan brush away, take out your uh, small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our wolf face and any other little tiny details that we feel might be necessary. So for me, I don't really have to do a whole heck of a lot. I might um, enhance my little chin highlight and maybe a little highlight of my nose. I definitely wanna put some whisker dots and some whiskers. Um, and I might add a little bit more highlight in through here or by the eye. So just little fiddles, I guess, at this point. Um, so what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna start with a little bit, of, oh, I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna use black, brown, white, and any other colors, but I think it's mostly black, brown, and white. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black and brown to make myself some whisker dots. So I'm gonna have these in kind of a chaotic-ish type of way. So. I was finding that they kind of look like they might be in little rows as they're coming out from that um, mouth area or near that mouth area, but in a chaotic way. So don't feel like you have to make these perfect rows of whiskers. I was even finding that there was some kind of small little black whiskery dots down in through here. So, you know, have fun with putting those there. The more texture you put, the more realistic it's gonna look anyways. So while those are kind of drying and resting, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna fiddle with my um, highlight on that chin. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush. I really, again, want this to be nice and bright. So I put a little bit more white paint on my brush and it looks a little flat to me. So I'm gonna bring a highlight right in the part where I feel it should pop out the most to, to the light source. So if I want this to look like it's got a little bit of um, form to it, I can bring this highlight in through here and then just kind of fade it out and down. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, again, add that shape to the face. It's gonna add that shape to this little chin and say, oh, okay, well, that highlight comes over here. That means that this part of the face protrudes a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more white down, um, down in through here. And this, I'm gonna just use little sketcherly marks. So it looks like they're just maybe little pieces of hair catching that bright light, maybe a little bit down in through here. I'm gonna pick up a touch of white just to pop a couple little 
itty bitty pieces on these edges in through here. I think that's looking pretty good. I don't think I need much more there. So I'm gonna use this white to, again, maybe enhance just a little bit in through here. That's good. And then maybe a teeny, I think I'm going white and a little yellow on this side right here. Just a, just a little bit of brightness right at this edge, right in through here. Again, I'm just trying to make it look like it's catching that light the best I can. A teeny tiny tip on the edge of that nose is going to, again, tell the viewer that is maybe wet or sparkling or shiny, catching that bit of the, um, the light from from wherever the light is coming. So something like that will help me with that. Now I'm going to put a tiny bit uh, underneath that eye. So just a little bit of white, maybe a touch of yellow. And again, this is just gonna enhance and maybe bring the viewer's eye over to check out this little detail over here. So just a little bit around that eye, giving those extra little pieces of fur maybe a bit more on that forehead. Again, just maybe adding a little fluffiness to it, putting little pieces of, of the hair just kind of um, pulled out just a little bit. And again, these some of these details are not necessary, but they're the little details that might add that something special to it. So now I'm gonna add some whiskers. So I'm gonna be using white plus water on my brush and I'm just gonna make sure my brush is nice and pointy. So what I like to do is I take my brush, I put, put a little bit of water on my brush and I took it in this white little paint and I spin my brush on the side of my palette. That will repoint my brush every time. And when I go to do these whiskers, I don't push hard. <laughs> I try not to anyways. So that's my, my best tip for you is don't press hard and just kind of um, put your brush where you want to and just flick it out. When you flick it, release the pressure of your hand and that will get that line to go a little bit skinnier as it goes farther away. So I'm gonna have some coming out from here and then maybe a couple coming out from here. So I cross my fingers and my toes when I do this <laughs> and I start and, and I try and keep my hand out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I just pull out a little whisker. The beautiful part about whiskers, especially on these wild animals, is they can come out in different directions and they can be different lengths. So don't feel that you have to put them all exactly the same length. Don't feel that they have to be necessarily the same color. I'm going to put a longer one in through here if I can, if I can do it. They don't have to be at the same angle. So I've got a couple in through there. Now I'm gonna put a couple on this side over here that are gonna cross over that mouth a little bit. And again, that's just gonna allow the viewer to understand, you know, what direction these little whiskers are, are coming out. So you can certainly have fun with that. And then once you've got that done, make any other little adjustments that you feel are necessary. And then we're gonna be using this same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be signing this one in the bottom left with green paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very beautiful animal and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.